I have many easy tips that took me years to acquire, and you're gonna get them in like 10 minutes. I'm talking about cold, wet, windy weather that's not only scary, brutal, but just downright dangerous. <sighs> the suffering I've done so you don't have to. Rain, the thing our body needs the most, and the thing that can kill us the easiest. What kind of bullshit is that? Why can water kill us so easily? Food doesn't do that. Well, there's McDonald's. They're pretty efficient at it. I had a Big Mac the other day that's still trying to take me down. Even in the summer, rain can still lower your body temperature enough to cause hypothermia. Your rain jacket, it sucks. It's going to rain on your next trip, but it's okay because you have a raincoat, right? you're probably gonna get wet. Your rain jacket isn't waterproof. In fact, most rain jackets aren't. It's actually the DWR coating on them that lets the water beat up and roll off of the fabric. Rain jackets for backpacking are meant to be breathable, but still keep you dry. I think they fall short on both of those categories, but we'll get into that. DWR is the key element of all rain jackets, but single layer jackets will wet out quicker than the heavier two to three layer jackets. Meaning the inside of the jacket will be just as wet as the outside completely soaked through. I'm just completely drenched right now. Sadly, this means that many lightweight rain jackets just aren't that good. Even the expensive ones. However, DWR coating will wear out and need reapplied on all rain jackets to function properly. I found that single layer jackets like this budget Decathlon and Columbia will wet out within minutes of a downpour, even when the DWR coating is new. They're okay for light rain protection while being active because your body heat will keep you warm, in theory. They're appealing to hikers because they're lightweight. I'll carry these in warm weather if rain is not in the forecast. Basically, if it's warm out and I'm not planning on using it, and if I do have to use it, I'm prepared to get wet. On trips where rain is expected or on cold trips where death is more likely, I opt for a layered jacket with an inner membrane that's much more reliable. Like this Mountain Hardware or Outdoor Vitals jacket. These can still wet out over time, but have also kept me dry during full days of hiking in the rain. A much better option for a slight weight penalty. If you're in cooler weather, and you're expecting rain, I advise strongly against bringing a single layer rain jacket. Anyone who's ever been there can tell you that the four or five ounce of weight savings is not worth it. An easy thing to overlook, small easy tasks become a nightmare when you cannot feel your fingers. Sometimes just opening a clip feels like my hands are getting smashed by a hammer. Rain gloves. It's easy though. Start a fire and get warmed up. I get that in the comments all the time. Starting a fire is easy. Even when your fingers are numb, you can't bend them. All the wood around you is completely soaking wet. When you're freezing, let me tell you, willpower is very elusive. Definitely the roughest camp I've ever had to set up. My hands are just freezing. The thought of just powering through the cold to get warm sounds easy, but you know what's easier? Being more prepared. One trip I got back to the trailhead after hiking all day in the rain, and this was summer, mind you. My fingers were so numb I could not unlock the door of my truck. Literally, I couldn't make a squeezing motion. Getting the key in the door took both hands, turning it, like literally took me a while. Now there were day hikers actually at the trailhead, so I could have asked for help, but I mean, they were day hikers. So I did the sensible thing and just struggled through it. And I finally got it. Sometimes you just gotta weigh the pros and the cons, risk dying, or ask a day hiker for help. I feel obligated to say that I'm joking because half of the world doesn't understand sarcasm, but I mean, the story is true. To combat cold hands, I use dual layer nitrile gloves. They're lightweight, they keep the cold water off my hands and really help to keep my fingers from going numb. They weigh next to nothing and are surprisingly warm for how thin they are. Now this applies for my normal three season backpacking, so not for like Canadian winters. Obviously these aren't gonna fit over your big wool mittens, but I always carry these little light cloth gloves uh, in cooler temperatures. This works for the majority of trips that I go on, but the best tip I actually have for cold hands is gonna be number four on today's list. If you're new to backpacking, walking with wet feet is not abnormal. Waterproof shoes and boots are not always a guarantee. In fact, I always opt for a non-waterproof trail runner in the summertime. Be prepared to have wet feet, plain and simple. Oh. Come on, don't be a bitch, dude. Removing your shoes for every water crossing is a huge pain and just wastes a lot of time. Uh, trail runners are lighter, they kind of air out quicker. If you're lucky, they might dry out before you get to camp. But recently I've grown really tired of having wet feet when it's cold out. Even though I backpacked in the snow and trail runners many times, ugh, I, yeah, I don't think I'm doing that anymore. <laughs> I'm much older and wiser now. 
So I've been looking in the market for a uh, mid-height waterproof boot for a while now, so I've been testing out these bad boys. These are the Nordiv 8 Armadillo 2 hiking boots. A lightweight ankle-high boot that doesn't break the bank. These really appeal to me for a number of reasons. Number one, the price. Don't let the low number fool you. These are high quality, super comfortable boots that will only set you back about 50 bucks. These are actually the number one selling boot on Amazon. So I'm gonna put the Amazon link down below so you guys can go and read the reviews for yourself. And you guys are gonna wanna hurry too because they are on sale because of the Thanksgiving Day season and you know, America's favorite holiday, Black Friday. Just remember what the season is about, being thankful for what you have and trampling anybody that gets in your way. Being primarily a winter boot for me, I don't want to throw down a ton of money. The build quality of the Armadillo 2s are solid, the grip is fantastic in wet areas, and they hug my feet really nicely. Very comfortable. And I think they're pretty lightweight. I mean, the name implies that, right? Armadillo? I mean, nothing says lightweight like a armored rodent. All right, that's about 22 and a half ounces. That is 638 grams for a size 10 and a half with a little bit of dirt on there. That's not bad for a mid-height waterproof boot. Uh, these are definitely lighter than my old ones. Great budget boots. Links down below. The reason why I say that again is because I know you guys still got your credit cards ready to go from Black Friday. Pro tip, do your Black Friday shopping on Amazon. Or if you prefer a more traditional confrontational holiday, you know, go to Walmart, wait four hours in line to save 20 bucks on a TV. America. Now the best tip for cold hands and feet is one that I admittedly avoided for years. You may have noticed that even after you put on dry socks or get in your sleeping bag, that it seems like your toes take forever to warm up. This is because insulation layers hold heat, not create it. Your feet need to generate heat in order for them to heat up quickly. When they're frozen solid, this can take a really long time. I remember like sitting on my feet in a tent for three hours one night. It literally just took forever for them to warm up. But I mean, I kind of have like circulation issues, I think. But that just means I have a lot of experience combating cold hands and cold feet. Bring hot hands. These don't add a ton of weight and are as good as gold if your hands or feet are numb. Start a fire, you say? Sounds amazing, but I wouldn't depend on it. And remember, we're talking about backpacking here. You might have hiked all day long, 10 to 20 miles, you get to camp, you're tired. I mean, you might want to start a fire or you might just want to take a nap. Also, recreational backpacking, not survival. I mean, you do you, but I do this for fun. And although I like a challenge, having numb toes is something that I avidly try to avoid. Drying out socks and clothing by the fire is a good practice, but it's not always practical in non-optimal conditions. My advice, hiking with wet feet is just something that you should try to get used to. Bring a lot of socks. Don't be a bitch, dude. The important thing is that you dry your feet out when you stop moving. Extra socks are as good as gold on the trail, but what about your shoes that are still wet? Well, let me tell you, that's about one of the suckiest parts about backpacking. The bread bag technique works wonders. This isn't a bread bag. I didn't have any. I'll get to that in a minute, but this is where trail runners that are light and airy stand out. Sometimes they just won't dry out, but they will dry out quicker than waterproof shoes or boots, and they're gonna be lighter when they're fully saturated. Remember, one pound on your feet is equal to five pounds on your back. Think about that before you go on another 10 mile hike. This honestly should be tip number one. If you don't use a rain cover because your pack is waterproof, that's gonna get you someday. If you have a waterproof pack or even a pack cover, it never hurts to have an extra pack liner inside your bag. Common liner materials are Dyneema, Nyla Flume, and my personal favorite, the trash compactor bag. I always have a trash bag in my pack, but I never have it all waterproofed if I'm not expecting rain. I like to live dangerously. It's just more efficient for me this way. If it starts raining, it's no big deal to just unpack my bag and start waterproofing the crucial items. Quilt, down jacket, other clothing, things that absolutely need to stay dry or I might die. Certain things in my pack, it won't matter if they get wet, if the pack happens to leak, or they're already in waterproof bags. I really think that sleeping bags should be kept in a sealed dry bag, uh, which is something I never do. Uh, really dumb, because if I fall in a river, like, I don't think that trash bag's really gonna do a whole lot. I'm basically just depending on my good balance and cat-like reflexes. I'll pay for it. Don't be a bitch, dude. So you wake up in the morning nice and toasty in your sleeping bag. Yesterday's breakfast scramble is ready to make its debut in the world. You zip your coat up, you're getting ready to go outside. Your shoes, yeah, they're, they're still wet. 
They didn't dry out at all. Bring bread bags or repurpose some of your dry bags or Ziploc bags to use as sock liners to keep your, your dry socks dry. I actually carry extra Ziploc bags for various reasons, so that's what I use. But, uh, yeah. I get a shot of those freaking broke-ass Ziploc bags. <laughs> yeah. I had food in those. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one's mine, but... Yeah. It's all right. I only recommend this, however, around camp though and not for hiking. If you do this while hiking, your feet can't breathe at all and you're just gonna soak another pair of socks. The other option is to go sockless. But any more than a quick journey to the john, my feet are frozen, so I don't like this technique. Now when it comes time to break camp and start the day's hike, time to just sack up. Your socks will be soaking wet within 30 seconds, but if you move with a purpose, they might dry out fairly quickly. Remember, the key is extra socks. Like, I don't bring extra clothing at all, but I'll bring a couple pair of extra socks depending on how long the trip is. How many depends on the weather, the length of the trip, the likelihood of being able to dry them out, and the individual's wimpiness. Don't be a Everything gets wet when you're setting up in the rain, and this is an invaluable asset for wiping down wet gear and body parts. Shut up! Small chamois cloths are my favorite. I cut them down to smaller sizes. They're lightweight. They have a sponge-like property so that when you're wiping down your walls or, or trying to sponge out water, you can always wring them out. If I'm expecting rain, I'll usually carry two of these. One is to get filthy because rain means mud where I'm from. Uh, the other one is to keep clean so I can clean off nice pieces of gear or myself. All right, that was a lot of rain tips. Much needed, but I'm gonna rip through these next ones. A thin layer might seem like it's not gonna add a lot of warmth, but blocking the wind is essential. If you don't carry a wind shirt, just put your rain jacket over your heavier layers. Wind shirts are super light and convenient. I often use mine in the mornings just to take the chill off, and then uh, once I start heating up while hiking, I can just take it off and it packs down small, I can stow it in any pocket. Nitrile gloves. Since I carry these for rain, I also use them when the wind is cutting through my fingertips. Like right now. Killer fog. This is pretty rare, but I've seen it. Really heavy fog or mist can creep into your shelter, saturating all of your gear. No matter how low you pitch your rain fly, this is something to be aware of. You guys see all that uh, stuff in front of my face? Crazy. It's like completely dry out. There's really not a lot you can do if this happens except have a prepared exit strategy from your campsite. I know, not the funnest thing to plan, but I do have a couple easy tips I'm going to talk about later on in the video. If at any time your sleeping bag is wet enough that it doesn't hold heat, extreme discomfort or hypothermia is a real possibility if you try to tough it out all night. Snow kind of sucks. <laughs> it's beautiful and can make for a really memorable like fun trip, but let's be honest It makes everything about backpacking harder and while we're being honest Not a fan Bushcrafting is fun, but bring fire starters biggest morale boost on a snowy trip is a warm fire to sit by I enjoy starting fires with primitive technology, but if I'm doing any actual backpacking in the snow fire starters are coming with me you will be labeled as a bushcrafter for life. Folding saws are really lightweight and a staple in my kit. You go find a tree that's not laying all soaked in the ground, drag it back to camp, chop her up. Fun for the whole family. Well, maybe not for little kids. They're a little dangerous, you know? Leave it to the experienced adults. That's my balance. Plus, it warms you up. I love cutting wood in the winter. I'm always warm around camp because I'm doing work. But a small saw is just as good as a big one. Remember, size doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Hot hands, again. These toe warmers are my absolute favorite. If it's snowing, I'm bringing these. These are always coming with me. Does that make me soft? I'm old enough to not care. And my pack's light, people. I got room. That's what's great about ultralight gear. You get your pack weight down so that you can bring little conveniences and little luxuries to allow full comfort. Don't let nature try to kill you. Leave that to Ronald McDonald. Now that you've mastered hiking in bad weather, there's still many other situations that can ruin a trip. You're gonna wanna watch this video right here to see how to avoid bad situations and take your backpacking to the next level. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one.